Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name's Mark McNulty, president of Action Coach Bluegrass, and today I have Dallas McGarity, chef and owner of The Fat Lamb, right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And today we're going to be talking about his business, his journey to business ownership, some challenges, best practices, and share a little peek into what it's really like to build and operate a business. Now, if this is your first time on our channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. So Dallas, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me on, Mark. To get us started, tell us a little bit about the Fat Lamb and how you came to be a chef and owner of an amazing restaurant in Louisville. Yeah, I started like everyone in the restaurant business starts out as a dishwasher or a busboy. I started as a dishwasher, but you know, I fell in love with the business and it was one of those things where it just was a natural fit for my personality and the way that I like to work. I have always been like a get her done kind of hard worker and being in the restaurant, there's a lot to do all the time in every restaurant. So if you take initiative and jump in and do it, you can go pretty far. So that was my whole thing. Like when I started out, I really enjoyed that. It was always busy, always something to do. And next thing you know, I've been in the business since 1996. So I'm getting up there in age with, with the business. I've been here for a while. But yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to own my own restaurant. And I think that's the thing. Because some chefs get into the business, you know, some cooks, they don't want to own a restaurant. They want to work in a restaurant. They want to work in a bigger company. I was always of the entrepreneurial spirit and wanted to do my own thing and kind of make my own way. And that's what I'm doing at the Fat Lamb. <laughs> Great. Tell me a little bit about your team. My team has been with me for a while. The best thing is I have my chef de cuisine who has been with me for almost 15 years now. He's been, you know, in some capacity working in a kitchen with me. So I kind of have that right hand guy. I have the team who works well together, gets along well together, and it has really helped the success of the restaurant. It's made the fat lamb a more inclusive place for everyone. Like we all want the same goal. We're all trying to do the same thing and make people happy. So that's my thing. It's great to have people that have the same mindset in your business. They won't run it like you run it ever because they don't own it, but they do have a vested interest in making sure that you're successful and they're successful. So it helps. Yeah. How do you balance chef, owner, boss, manager, leader? How do you balance or juggle those? Often it's juggling, not it's, balancing. No. It's absolutely juggling. Yeah, it's absolutely juggling. You know, it's one of those things where I am very organized. I have a calendar that is an ongoing kind of thing. I have a list every day when I get going and it's all about organization for me. I have to have notes because <laughs> if I don't have notes, I will forget what I got to do. But yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to juggle it all, especially having young kids. I have a 12 year old and a 10 year old. And it's one of those things they have a bunch of stuff going on after school. I want to be a parent. I want to be a dad. I want to go to the archery tournament or the basketball tournament, whatever they're doing. And for me to be able to do that, I also have to rely on the staff that's here. I have to delegate and I have to trust that they're going to do the best job they can. And they're going to rely on me to give them guidance, even when I'm not here. And that has been my most successful part of balancing everything is being organized and making sure that the staff feel comfortable talking to me about things without worrying if I'm going to get angry or worrying if they did it wrong or any of that stuff. It's one of those things I tell the staff here, I want them to make mistakes because they learn from every mistake they make. And so if they make all these mistakes six months down the road, they're going to be fantastic at their job and they're not going to have to worry about anything. They're not going to even need me really. So I'm trying to do that and make sure that everyone is as independent as possible in the restaurant. And it frees me up to be a little more outside of the restaurant, which isn't the case in most chef owner spots. I tell people that I didn't buy myself a job. A lot of times restaurateurs, they buy themselves a job. I'm the chef, you know, I want to cook everything. I want to be on the line all the time. I want to prep everything, that kind of stuff. But you have to learn to delegate if you're going to be successful in this business. So. Yeah. So tell me more about that. So what did you learn that you needed to do different so that it wasn't just a job? Well, you know, we have standardized recipes. We change the menu quite often, but every time we change the menu, we work really hard to get the recipes standardized so that anyone can make the gnocchi or anyone can make the cream sauce or anyone can, you know, braise the short ribs. So that way 
if there is an issue, if something comes up, if I need to go do something, my chef de cuisine can't be here. If there's an issue, everyone can participate to make it happen. That's the key. I think having everything standardized and everything, you know, lined out to where it makes everything consistent is very important. I mean, restaurants live and die on consistency. You know, Applebee's may be Applebee's, but you know what you're getting when you go in there, no matter what, you know what you're going to get. Obviously we're not like that, but we're consistent, but we're not chain consistent, but that's what makes us independent. (laughs) Okay, great. There are a lot of restaurants in Louisville. So how do you stand out? Well, I mean, I think we stand out because we offer a wide range of different cuisines on our menu. I mean, we blend a lot of flavors together to make the food that we make. I mean, we've been doing this for quite a while. It's one of those things where I think people come into the fat lamb expecting something different than we provide, but it's in a good way. We're in a strip mall. So when people come in and we're an elevated, nicer restaurant, and then they see the menu and then they taste the food and they have the cocktails. It creates a different experience and it's more like a wow factor for people. It's one of those things where we bring a lot of creativity to the table, but in an approachable way. People aren't off put by the flavors in the menu and we give excellent service. Our service is extremely top notch. We pride ourselves in that. The team in the front of the house side of things, they run the floor like consummate professionals. They're amazing. And they've worked with me a while here at the restaurant. And that's one thing I think has made us very successful is having high quality service, but also having that consistency and the creativity behind it. Restaurant industry is pretty well known for high turnover on staff. (laughs) Yeah. And sounds like you've not had that. And that's one of the things that allows you to deliver. Yeah, absolutely. what, What have you done? What's your secret to that? You know, I don't think there's a giant secret to it. I think my success with it has been that I'm just a real person. I treat my employees like I treat my family and myself. I've worked for people that you work for. Here in the in the Fat Lamb, it's more like we all work together to do the same thing. And I'm included. You know, I'm an employee as well. Like I come in and I sweep and help clean and do stuff that normal owners don't really do even some chefs aren't on board you know like i'm a chef i'm gonna make the menu you got to do what i say but it's more collaborative here and i think that over the years has allowed people that have felt uncomfortable or unhappy at other places come here and get you know lifted up again and feel like they're back into the restaurant game because you know we do hire professionals we hire people that are into service and into cooking and into cocktails and that kind of stuff they really live and breathe the industry. And I think our success with holding on to those folks is allowing them to do that with other individuals that are like-minded, which is extremely hard to do. It's hard to find. And when you do find them, you know, you have to hold on to them as best you can. So we've, you know, I mean, I'm very relaxed with scheduling. I'm very relaxed with, you know, someone needs a day off, that kind of stuff. And during the day, you know, like I need a personal day today. Can I have the day? to take it easy. Usually we can accommodate and everybody else jumps in to make it happen for the person that needs it. So we all support each other. And I think that's hard to do in the restaurant because a lot of restaurants are huge and they're open seven days a week and they're, you know, lunch and dinner, sometimes breakfast, lunch and dinner, late nights, that kind of stuff. I have structured the fat lamb to actually be more on our schedule, on the staff schedule. You know, we're open Tuesday through Saturday. 5 to 10 p.m. We do private stuff on some days, some days we don't. But for the most part, everyone works five days a week maximum, 40, 45 hours a week maximum. And everyone makes great money doing it because we don't have an overflow of extra staff because everyone works together. So it's a good situation to be in here at the Fat Lamb and it's a small restaurant. I never wanted anything that was too big and too hard to operate because in the restaurant business, margins are extremely low. So looking at the margins, I don't want to have this gigantic space that I have to fill up every day all the time. You know, I want a 50, 60 seat restaurant that I can fill up Friday and Saturday nights and just have casual, easy going weeks and still be successful. I tell people no one's going to get rich owning and running a restaurant or working in a restaurant, but you can be happy and comfortable and have a great life if you do it a certain way. 
And I think I've found my secret to running the restaurant and keeping people happy and keeping them on board with us. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. So let's talk about marketing. How do people find you? You know, what kind of marketing <laughs> are you doing so that people find you? You know, it's always been kind of grassroots stuff. It's weird because we've been here for seven years and there's people that still don't know we exist, which I think is a great thing. It's an untapped market out there. You know, we can still promote and still do things. I think we do one print ad and food and dining and like, you know, a few other things. But most of our promotion comes from donating gift cards, supporting charities, doing things in the community, having, you know, special nights at the restaurant where we donate part of the sales to whatever charity is happening. And those charities, I vet pretty well because I like to support charities that are small and local and that you can see some of the benefit of the money that you've given to them. You know, you don't want to support a charity that you don't know where the money goes. At least for me, I don't want to do that. I think that's been mostly the way we've survived is word of mouth and people just talking, you know, just saying, hey, you got to go try to fat lamb or, hey, well, they did this with the fat lamb. You should check them out. They supported our school they supported our charity and we get a lot of people that come back from those events saying we've never tried your restaurant we want to check you out and that's how we build regulars we have a couple that comes in twice a week and have been coming in twice a week on wednesdays and fridays for the past i think three years four years every single wednesday and friday it's amazing i ask them i'm like are you not tired of our food by now and they're like no we love it it's great Everyone knows us. The service is excellent. You guys are very consistent. And I think that brings them back, you know? So what's one thing that you wish more people knew about the fat lamb? Well, I wish people knew that we did a lot more than just lamb. <laughs> Everybody thinks the fat lamb serves all lamb. I don't know why, but they come in and they realize we do a lot of vegetarian options. We do a lot of seafood dishes, that kind of thing. I think the name of the restaurant is catchy. It was probably the third or fourth name that we picked in a list of probably five, 600 names that we wrote down in a notebook. And I just kept going back to the fat lamb because it just stuck in my mind. I actually asked my graphic designer friend who designed the logo. I said, pick from this 30 names, which one sticks out? And he kept going back to the fat lamb too. So it's one of those things where I think the name has actually helped market us tremendously, but also it's kind of hurt us too because some people are afraid to come in, you know? But we were doing a dinner series called Eat Your Veggies for a while, and we were selling it out. It was a Sunday night thing. We were doing it was an extracurricular kind of thing for the staff and stuff. But it was a five course veggie tasting menu paired with wines, and we were selling it out like crazy. I mean, we couldn't keep up with it, so we stopped doing it. But we're going to bring it back in the spring when the farmers hit us back up and come back in the building, and hopefully people realize that oh yeah, you can get a nice cheeseburger at the Fat Lamb, or you can get a fancy lamb chop. Do you have a signature dish? We got a few, honestly. I mean, we have a couple appetizers. I'll probably never be able to take off the menu. We do a baked goat cheese dish, and it comes out on a little cast iron skillet with a fluffy pita, and people just rave about it. I mean, some people come in especially for that. The cheeseburger, people say we have the best cheeseburger in town. I don't know. It's on the menu because I like it, but, you know, it's one of those things where if I want a cheeseburger, I want to come here and get a cheeseburger at the restaurant. And we do gnocchi. We do a ricotta gnocchi that is just like the creamiest, pillowiest, cheesy dumplings you've ever had. I think that's probably one of our signature dishes. I was on Chopped in 2019. My, my Chopped episode aired, and I did the gnocchi on Chopped from scratch. And they were just like, wow, he's making pasta. And I'm like, I make this stuff every day, you know? So I'm making this gnocchi, and the judges are like, wow, these are delicious. And I think that helped me win Chopped, but... It's one of those dishes I'll probably have on the menu for a very long time. Okay, awesome. So why did you choose to open your own versus working for somebody else? I know a lot of chefs, that's the dream. How did that fit into your plan? I ended up getting lucky and finding a space that fit my needs, but I've always wanted to open my own restaurant. I've been doing it for a lot of people throughout the years, and learning from them. You know, I've, I've been running kitchens and, and part of management for a very long time and a lot of bigger restaurants around the city and, and even in South Carolina when I was in South Carolina. And I've learned a ton of stuff on how to run a restaurant and how not to run a restaurant. And I figured, you know, if I can do something smaller on my own for myself and give the staff a good quality of life and give the staff 
a good place to be, it'll do really well. Cause I've, I've worked with restaurant tours that don't understand front of the house or don't understand back of the house operations or don't understand food cost or P and L or liquor cost or that kind of stuff. And doing all that for everyone else, let me know that I have the confidence and the knowledge to do it on my own. So that's kind of why I opened my own space. It was time. It was time for me to do my own thing because I've learned what I could learn from the people that I was working for. When you were starting up, was there any memorable roadblock or hurdle or challenge that you, you didn't <laughs> expect that you had to overcome? Oh, there's always challenges, but <laughs> I think that's the beauty of working in a restaurant. I mean, every day is a challenge, you know, you got all kinds of stuff going on, but obviously getting to where I could open my own restaurant monetarily that's a challenge i didn't get any investors i didn't get any silent partners or backers or any of that stuff to open the fat lamb i just did it on my own and saving up and making my way to do that was the hardest part honestly it's hard to get business funding for a restaurant in general just because the margins are so low and there's so many fails you know it's a, a very low success rate for restaurants but I saved enough money to where I could start my own thing and get my own thing going. But that was the challenge is saving enough money to find a place that you can afford to put your money into. Most places that are open in Louisville are gigantic. They're big restaurants, 150, 200 seats. Those places have backers and partners and that kind of thing, investors. But I really didn't want to do that with my restaurant because I've done that with other folks. I've been partners in restaurants with other people. I've learned a lot working with those guys, but it was one of those things where it was too many cooks in the kitchen. Everybody says, oh, I want to have this kind of pasta on the menu. I want to have you know, half duck on the menu. You got to have a something crazy, you know, that they've seen in another restaurant that they like. And that's fair. You know, you own the restaurant, your partner, you want that stuff in there. But as far as like a profitability standpoint, they just didn't understand that that wasn't something you could do and still have a good margin on. You know, and those kind of things sometimes overtake a restaurant. That's why a lot of restaurants are so big. They use volume to fix all their problems. And right. the Fat Lamb, we use volume sometimes to fix our problems. But for the most part, we use just our knowledge on how to run a restaurant to do what we do. Great. I love that. Where do you see the business three to five years from now? I know we'll still be in operation three to five years from now in the Highlands because it's, you know, it's my neighborhood. But I think, I don't know, I've had a lot of people reaching out wanting me to expand in other markets. I don't know if that's an idea I want to pursue yet or not. I've been talking with my wife about it and she's like, well, you have a pretty good setup now. It's running really well. And I'm like, yeah, but we could recreate this in Indianapolis or in Denver or in you know Asheville, North Carolina. Or there's a lot of places that I think our concept would do amazing. What kind of training do you do for your team? It sounds like developing your people is one of the things that. It's definitely, yeah. So, I mean, training on the kitchen side of things, you know, we do a ton of active training on the line, working with someone, you know, I'll work next to the cooks and show them how to do things, physically break down meat with them and make pasta with them and that kind of thing until they're comfortable doing on their own. So it's, that's definitely something we definitely take pride in is instructing the staff in the kitchen, in the, in the back of the house, hands-on. The front of the house, we do wine trainings with vendors. We do a lot of online wine training, a lot of books. We have a lot of wine books in the restaurant that if someone wants to know something about some wine, they can reach out and do it. And, and we also do a lot of cocktail training. Our staff here, we have, I'm, I've been lucky to have a bar manager that is extremely knowledgeable in cocktails and bourbons and the things that people do in Louisville. He is one of the best in the city, I feel. But he has done that with the staff. He's trained the staff. We have a pre-shift every day. We talk specials, we talk concerns, we talk new items, new wines, that kind of thing. And so I think having that pre-shift and that making sure that everyone's on the same page before we start a shift and basically getting the group together, doing a little powwow, I think that has done tremendous for our small of a restaurant. You know, if we're a big restaurant, obviously it's harder, but being so small, a lot of the training comes from the day-to-day -day operations of what we're doing. And that pre-shift is a very important part of that. Okay. Awesome. 
Well, we've covered a lot. I appreciate it. So I want to ask you just a few quick questions to start to wrap us up. So first is, what's your key to success? My key to success is organization. Organization and getting in there and doing something that needs to be done. I mean, if I see a light bulb out, I change it immediately. If I see dust on something, I dust it. Those are the things. I think that's my key to success. And I think the staff seeing me do these things, it motivates them to do it as well because they know I would never ask them to do something that I wasn't comfortable doing myself. And I think that speaks volumes to owning a restaurant. Excellent. So what's one piece of advice you would give to other business owners or entrepreneurs? I would say just because it's a dream to do something for you, make sure you know about every single facet of it before you jump in, especially in in the restaurant world. You know, this is where I'm at. So it's one of those things. If you don't know how to run a bar or the front of the house and you're a great chef, learn those things. Make sure and learn the parts that you're weak at and build on those and become really strong at those things before you do it on your own. That's going to help you tremendously throughout the process. So Awesome. What's a book that you're reading or listening to, if it's Audible or podcast or that you've read recently that you would recommend to other business owners? I do listen to a ton of restaurant podcasts. I like Restaurant Impossible a lot. They have a lot of stuff in there that is very helpful to restaurant tours and it helps with everything from profit margins to, you know, advertising to just little tricks of the trade to get your group together and make everybody work as a team. That's probably where I'm at with with podcasts, you know, Restaurant Impossible's top of the list for me. Okay. Last question before we start to wrap up. If I had a magic wand and could fix or improve one part of your business, what would you want me to wave it over? (laughs) Probably supply chain issues. (laughs) For us, it's been a challenge. I mean, we've had all kinds of supply chain issues in the last few years. It's been really tough to get certain items that make our food consistent or certain wines that, you know, everyone can get. And then it just disappears. We can't get it anymore. Or having bourbon. I mean, there's bourbon's been all over the place lately. I mean, there's been issues with Buffalo Trace because they switch distributors and they sell a lot of the higher end stuff. So it's one of those things where... I think supply chain issues would be the thing that we need fixing the most. And that's not even our business. It just affects our business. Okay. Um, I'll work on that. Um, (laughs) So how can people learn more about the restaurant? You've got your website, you've got your social media presence. Is there anything else for them to keep track of you or learn more about? The best way is definitely social media. I do a lot of social media, mainly on Instagram. It's Fat Lamb Louisville on Instagram. That's our handle. Follow us on that. I do pictures of our food, of our drinks, of dinners coming up and promotions that we do. And definitely our website. Our website's fatlamblouisville.com. I update it myself, so I pay a lot of attention to that. It really, really is useful when people are booking things, so you can sign up on the website. Great. So final question for you. What inspires you the most right now? What inspires me the most right now is farmers. I have a lot of farmers that have, they're shutting down for the season, kind of getting ready to go into hibernation, but they're still producing throughout the winter. I have a guy who has a greenhouse and he is growing things just for us. And he's like, I got all this cool produce and what do you want to do with it? And I'm like, this is amazing. You know, if you can support local farmers like that, That really is inspiring, especially because they don't have an income until spring. So to be able to help those guys out and to get some really cool stuff out of the process, it just, it's inspiring and it makes me want to do great things with it. I like that. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been Dallas McGarity, chef and owner of the Fat Lamb. It's located on 2011 Grinstead. Is that right? Yep. That's us. 2011 Grinstead. So stop by and visit them and have some of those nochi. That sounded really good, the nochi. That's good. Thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for our next interview. Talk to you again soon. Bye.